everyone and welcome back to my channel for all things mommy wife and life my name is chessa so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you my one week postpartum update i just had my second baby girl at 39 weeks pregnant so if you've been following along for a while you guys know that i have been keeping you guys updated on all of my pregnancy updates week by week so i wanted to kind of do that with my one week postpartum update and kind of show you the belly progression and what it kind of looks like after one week of after giving birth. And I'm just gonna kind of take you through my symptoms over this last week after giving birth. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's free and I post every Friday and sometimes Mondays. If I have time, you know, mom life. So the recovery in the hospital was actually pretty easy. They still give you some meds um, depending on how you're feeling. Um, they give you like a really strong Tylenol and ibuprofen um, all at the same time and that kind of helps ease the afterbirth contractions. Um, after I gave birth I felt fine because I did have an epidural so I felt fine for the first day and then the second day is kind of uh, when they kept giving you the medication and I still felt fine. And I did have some uh, cramping or contractions while I was in the hospital. They gave me like some heating pads and that really helped out. They actually gave me a ton to take home too so they really helped out this week. The only thing about recovery in the hospital is that they just really don't give you a lot of sleep. They come in every couple of hours to check you and check baby. With COVID, they have been trying to lessen those, but they still come in quite frequently, so you still don't get much sleep. I felt a lot of afterbirth pains this time around. I don't really remember having them with my first baby, except for just one time, um, like the day I came, this like the day or second day I came home from the hospital with baby number one. I felt like this huge, huge contraction or like, you know, abdominal pain. And it was just like the one time. But then after I had a bowel movement, I felt fine after that. And I didn't take any medications when I came home from the hospital before. But this time I definitely had to take a lot more of the medications that they recommended, uh, which was just the Tylenol and ibuprofen. Those meds can definitely stop you up, so that is why stool softeners are recommended, which I have been taking this time and it has been so much easier. I have stopped taking the pain medications as of, I think yesterday I stopped. There was one day I skipped and then the following morning I felt a lot of pain, um, like, you know, just more contractions. And then I started taking them again and then, and I didn't take any as of yesterday or today and I'm feeling fine. Um, I have been taking the afterbirth um, tincture. I don't even know what it is. It's just kind of like an herbal remedy, I guess, that a lot of people swear by. I honestly don't know if that's been helping. I did take some yesterday and I didn't feel anything and I didn't take the pain meds, but, and I didn't take it today or pain meds and I feel fine now. I don't really know if it's working or not, to be honest, um, because I was also taking the pain meds. It tastes gross, but to me, honestly, I don't really know if it's making a difference. I'm gonna continue to take it just until the bottle's gone because, you know, I don't wanna waste the money that I spent on it, which wasn't very much. I think it was like 15 bucks or something like that. As of yesterday, my bleeding has slowed down quite a bit. I haven't noticed that much blood in my pad at all. And today, um, it's been really, really slow. You know, just it picks up when you move around a little bit more. And I haven't been wearing my support belts yet, so I think I'm going to start wearing those and see if that helps a little bit with the pooch and also if, you know, it might make me bleed a little bit more just because you are like tightening things up a little bit. So maybe I'll con continue to see some bleeding, but it has not been as thick as it has been over the last few days since being home. Since being home, I have kind of felt fine. Exhaustion kind of hit in the second day after coming home, just because the first night after coming home, baby started to cluster feed a lot and I was up pretty frequently. Although I will say that my baby is a super awesome sleeper during the day. So like right now she is sleeping and honestly I should be sleeping as well just because they say to sleep when the baby sleeps. It's just really hard for me to sleep during the day and I feel so much worse if I do sleep than if I don't sleep. That sounds so weird but I have been sleeping in the last few days and I still just feel like kind of gross and groggy and I feel more like myself if I actually stay up. At night though, my baby does wake up like every two hours or so. It's crazy that during the day she sleeps just perfectly fine and then at night is when she's like, I'm awake, I'm ready to party. The first few days after coming home, I've been feeling so sore, not even down there in my nether regions, but like my back, my legs, have just been super sore and my boobs since my my milk has come in they're also very sore my nipples are very sore um, just because baby's still learning how to latch and she's not doing the best job initially it hasn't been as bad as the first time around the first time around my nipples were a mess like they were 
cracked, bleeding, scabbed, super gross. This time they are not. And every time that I would nurse, I was feeling contractions for the first couple of days. Now I'm not feeling them so much, which is great. The day, the night we brought her home was the worst because she was cluster feeding because my milk hadn't come in yet, which is super common. Um, and I think that my milk came in the following day, which was great. And I think it mostly is because I was literally like chugging the mother's milk tea and like the, um, oh, what was the other one? <laughs> milk something. I started taking those in the hospital and I think that that's made a super huge difference and how quickly my milk came in and plus this was baby number two so I think that my body kind of like fell into it a little bit quicker than last time but I definitely recommend taking that kind of stuff to the hospital. My hospital did provide me the mother's milk tea, which was awesome, which they did not do last time, so that must be new, but I still brought a bunch with me. My mental state is really good, no signs of postpartum depression. I didn't have postpartum depression with my last baby either, which was great. Make sure you are checking into your mental health as well because that's really important, and a lot of people don't talk about postpartum depression. They feel guilty for having it, which even makes it worse. Please talk to somebody if you are feeling like you have postpartum depression. That being said, I have still noticed that I am very emotional. I was like watching TV the other day and there was like this scene that wasn't even that sad and I just started crying. And I mean, you know, lack of sleep and all of your hormones being all crazy. I feel like that's totally normal. And sometimes it's really good to just have a good cry. So if you feel like crying, Try it out, girl. Have a good cry. So let's talk a little bit about my weight. My starting weight for this pregnancy was 185. I am 5'9", just for any reference. My starting weight was 185, and then the first trimester I lost weight, so I think I went down to like 180. And then of course I picked it back all back up. When they admitted me to the hospital, they weighed me, and I weighed 91 kilos or 200 pounds. So I did weigh 200 pounds by the time baby got here. I did not gain that much weight with this pregnancy, which was great because she came out Seven pounds 11 ounces and she was measuring just fine 20 inches long so she was healthy I was healthy so this was definitely a fluke because last time I definitely gained 30 pounds but right now I weigh 186 pounds and some change so I'm almost completely back to my um, starting weight which is awesome but I mean given that she was seven pounds and then the placenta on top of that all of the extra fluids and I've been breastfeeding so I'm not surprised that I went back to my normal weight so fast but again I did start much higher than last time I can't remember I feel like I was like 165 with my first daughter. My recovery down there has been super easy. I was very lucky. I did not have any tearing. I did not have any stitches. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure if I had them last time or not. I remember they spent a lot of time down there last time, um, but I can't remember if I had stitches. I probably did because I remember my recovery down there was a lot worse last time. I remember having a lot more stinging and swelling there last time, and this time I didn't have any of that, which I was very thankful for. I didn't need any of the postpartum stuff that I had bought for myself. The hospital literally gave me everything that I needed, and even the stuff that they didn't give me that I purchased, I didn't even end up using. So I didn't even use the tux pads. I didn't have hemorrhoids, so that was awesome as well. And I purchased the dermaplast, um, which I didn't even end up using because I'd had no um, tearing or stitches. My first daughter is four and a half years old and she is just the best big sister ever. She is obsessed with her little sister. She is so cute with her. The only problem is, is that she is very rough with her and she's not rough in a mean way. She just doesn't know her own strength and she just doesn't know how fragile newborn infants are so she's just you know a little too rough so her preschool has been saying that her transition with this whole thing has um, been a little rough. She's been crying a lot, saying that she misses me and misses her baby sister. And she just says she doesn't wanna to go to school in the morning. She wants to stay home with us. And that's really hard. It's really hard to hear that. It just breaks my heart that she is missing us so much because I miss her too. Her preschool's also been saying that she has been like rocking the baby dolls um, at school and she's been trying to breastfeed them too, which is so cute. Like, I just think that's so sweet. So I wanted to show you my arm too. Um, I, you, as you can see, I have a ton of bruising and that's where like the IV was sticking in. They actually had to poke me a couple times. So like once right there, um, and then they poked me somewhere else, I think right there somewhere. And then they poked me again here. And so, and they actually poked me on the other arm as well because they couldn't find my veins. They could only find like my arteries and stuff. So that's been super sore and it would really hurt during um, labor as well when they were just putting all the stuff into my IV, it like hurt like crazy. Okay, so now I'll show you the belly so you can kind of get an idea of what a one week postpartum belly looks like. So as you can see, I still definitely have a pooch, but it's definitely down a lot <laughs> from my 39 weeks. 
and I'm loving these Fabletics leggings because they definitely hold everything in. And that's everything for this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure you are subscribed. I would love it if you would be a part of my YouTube family so you can continue to get updates from me. I post all motherhood and lifestyle content every Friday and sometimes Mondays, so be sure to check back. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.